Hello and welcome to yet another episode of History Time. We have heard of Chennai Corporation. In the old days, that was Madras Corporation before 1996. In recent years, it's become the Greater Chennai Corporation. But its headquarters, Ripon Building, has remained one constant. Ask anybody in the city as to where does the Corporation of Chennai function from and they will all tell you that it is Ripon Building. Should we not know about the history of Ripon Building? That is what we are going to see today. Come, let us go and see that historic edifice. Chennai Corporation is one of the oldest corporations in the world. The London Corporation is supposed to be the first. And a few years later, on September 29, 1688, the Corporation of Madras was inaugurated by Royal Charter. It makes it probably the second oldest corporation in what was once the British Empire. This historic corporation functioned in the initial years, in fact for almost two centuries, inside Fort St. George at various places. Then finally, in the 19th century, it shifted into rental accommodation on Erebaluchetti Street in Georgetown. There is just one bad photograph of how the building looked. But all accounts agree that it was ill-ventilated, small and completely unsuitable for bringing the corporation headquarters of a bustling city. And therefore, there was always pressure for constructing a proper building to house the corporation of the city. In 1908, the government allotted land for this purpose on one corner of what was once People's Park. Therefore, we must know what was People's Park or where was People's Park. It was 116 acres of green parkland, an idea of Governor Sir Charles Trevelyan, who inaugurated it in 1859. It had swimming baths, it had carriageways, it had a bandstand, it had a zoo, everything. It was enormous. And during evenings and during weekends, much of the population of Madras city would go and relax in this green lung. But over a period of time, several buildings were constructed on People's Park. The first was Central Station. Then came Moor Market, on whose site today stands the suburban railway terminal. Victoria Public Hall, and then came Ripon Building. All these buildings occupied a majority of what was once People's Park. Today, all that is left of that huge space of green is a small garden called My Lady's Garden. That stands on one side of Sidenham's Road, which is today known as Raja Muttaya Road, on one side of Ripon Building. This park was the Mayor's Park, and it still is the Mayor's Garden. In the early years of the 20th century, the mayor used to use it for tea parties and also for the annual flower show. Today, it is not put to that use, but even now, it is beautifully maintained. And if you have not been there, you should go there and see it. It's full of trees and some wonderful statues inside it. That is all that is left of People's Park. But in 1908, as I told you, land was allotted on one side of People's Park for the construction of the corporation's headquarters. The activity began on December 11, 1909, when Lord Minto, the then Viceroy of India, laid the foundation stone. The work began with much of it being executed by P. Loganada Mudaliar, who was a very prominent contractor of South India. The initial estimate for the work was 3.5 lakhs, but finally it would balloon to 7 lakhs. Even then, what was completed was a most impressive building. 265 feet in length, 132 feet in width. It encloses within it 100,000 square feet of constructed area. On the ground floor were 16 rooms at that time, at the time of construction, meant for the revenue department. On the first floor, with 22 rooms, that was meant for the general department and the health departments of the corporation. Also on the first floor was the room meant for the president of the corporation, which today is the commissioner and IAS officer. In those days when Ripon Building was completed, this post was invariably held by British ICS officers. On the topmost floor is the mayor's room and the council chamber. 
The mayor's post had a very interesting history. Initially, it was there. Then it was done away with. Then in 1919, it was brought back as the president of the corporation. And the ICS officer who held the post of president became the commissioner of the corporation. And that position continues even today. The president in 1932 became the mayor. In 1919, the first Indian to become president of the corporation of Madras was Sir Pitti Tyagaraya Chetty, one of the founders of the Justice Party. In 1932, the first man to become the mayor after that post was brought in was Kumara Raja M. A. Muthaya Chetiar of Chetinad, later to become Raja Sir Muthaya Chetiar of Chetinad. Next to the mayor's chamber is the corporation's council chamber, a very interesting room indeed. When you go inside, the first thing that strikes you is the mayor's chair. This was made entirely of Burma teak and gifted to the corporation council by Kumara Raja M. A. Muthaya Chetiar when he became the mayor. It is not just a chair, it is almost a monument. It has a canopy, it's got huge armrests and an exceedingly heavy piece of woodwork. In front of it is the mayor's desk. Fronting the mayor's desk is a special holder for the mayor's mace. The mayor of Madras or the mayor of Chennai, wherever he or she goes, is preceded by a mace bearer who carries the mace wherever the mayor goes along with him. The mayor has uniforms, which he or she has to wear for different occasions. But let's not get into all of that. We will look into that in some other episode on Chennai's history. But what is of interest is the council chamber itself. On one side of the council chamber is the press gallery, which is right on top. To access this gallery, you need to go up a spiral staircase made entirely of wrought iron. Most interesting. Then, if you look at the chair which is just to the, next to the mayor, it's a very heavy piece of wood and that is the commissioner's chair. On the back of the commissioner's chair, you will find some small symbol carved. When you go and look closely at it, you will find it is an effigy of St. George slaying the dragon. That was the symbol of Madras city for a very long time. In 1913, when Ripon building was completed, the symbol of Ripon building was added to this effigy and that became the logo of the city. In 1955, the symbols of the Chera, Chora and the Pandya rulers was brought in and added to the corporation emblem. And today, along with the symbol of the Ripon building, which is on top of the shield, that forms the logo of the corporation. All the logos, therefore, are present in the council chamber. Having seen the council chamber, let us come down and see the corridors. The first thing that strikes you is the ventilation of the place. The bright sunlight that floods the building and the air that continuously wafts in from the sea. Ripon building was constructed at a time when there was not much electricity in use. and Therefore, natural ventilation was needed and that is how the entire building was planned. This wonderful plan was given by G.S.T. Harris, who was then the architect for the government of Madras. Now, Loganada Mudaliar, as I said, did the entire construction. But such a huge building required an enormous quantity of bricks. Where did the bricks come from? They came from Chulai Medu. Chulai Medu is a relatively new locality of the city. But at that time, that is where all the brick kilns were present. And in Aminji Kerai was one of the largest brick kilns of the city owned by Tatikonda Nambermal Chetty and his business partner Nemali Patabhiramarao. Nambermal Chetty was the master contractor of Madras city. Practically every red colored building in the city was constructed by him. Nemali Patabhiramarao was the Divan of Cochin and after retirement came to Madras and became the partner of T. Nambermal Chetty. Between the two of them, they supplied all the bricks for the construction of Ripon buildings. Ripon building itself has got a very interesting foundation. 50 feet under the ground, there are 750 wells, each of 5 feet diameter. And each well is filled with reinforced concrete and the entire structure is standing on it. Right in the middle of this building is a 132 feet tower. 
resting on that foundation. And on top of that tower is a clock of four faces. Each face has got a diameter of eight feet. And in the old days, this entire clock imported from England used to chime. And even today, when you climb the tower, you can see the cast bells inside it. Today, the bells don't chime any longer. But when they did, they used to chime in exactly the same tune as Big Ben in London. The clock continues to function even today. Ripon Building was thrown open on 26th November 1913 by Lord Harding of Penshurst, who was then the Viceroy of India, which is why even today, the helpline of the Chennai Corporation is 1913. It commemorates the year in which the building was inaugurated. When we come down the building, we see many statues. The first statue that strikes your eye is that of Sir Pitti Tyagaraya Chetty, entirely made of white marble and facing the building. By its side is a huge bronze statue of Lord Ripon. I have spoken in an earlier episode about how he was the first Viceroy of India who said Indians could govern by themselves. And that is how, when the building was completed, it was decided to name it after him. The, the statue was elsewhere in the city and it then moved over here. Next to Ripon's statue is a statue of Satyamurti, the great freedom fighter and patriot, who was mayor of Madras in the 1940s. It was he who first said that the city needed a new reservoir to bring water to slake its thirst. And even today, that reservoir is known as Satyamurti Sagar. By the side of Satyamurti is yet another statue, and that is that of Kumara Raja M.A. Muthya Chetiar, later Raja Sir M.A. Muthya Chetiar, the first Indian to become mayor of the Madras Corporation. The road by the side of Ripon Building is even today known as Raja Muthya Road. Behind this statue is a bust of Divan Bahadur P.M. Sivagnana Mudaliyar, one of the early 19th century councillors of the Madras Corporation and a man who practically devoted his entire life to public service. Those are the statues outside the building. Inside the building is a statue as well. And that is that of E. Conran Smith, who was commissioner of the corporation in the 1920s. Even today in Gopalapuram, there is a road called Conran Smith Road. Conran Smith would have a great career and later go on to become a member of the Viceroy's Executive Council as well. Such a wonderful building with such great engineering incorporated into it has stood for 110 years. It was inaugurated in 1913. We are now in 2023. And despite all the metro rail work that has gone under it, the building still stands. It's a great testimony to the construction work of P. Loganada Mudaliyar. And it truly is a symbol of the resilience of Madras, that is Chennai. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.